You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Simone. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do so right now. We've already checked out the EQC and EQA from Mercedes-Benz. Now they bring us their third EV SUV offering called the EQB. Today, I'm checking out the 2023 EQB in its slightly more powerful 354 Matic. It's up against the Tesla Model X, which is unavailable for order in Australia at the moment. It also has some tough rivals in Hyundai's Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6, electric SUVs we are very familiar with at Cartel TV. So let's take a look at the latest EQB from Mercedes and see how it compares. It's based on the design of the GLB, but up front you'll know it's an EV by the characteristic black panel grille. There's also the continuous LED light strip. Side on, it's big and boxy, but has a strong presence with its AMG multi-spoke 20-inch alloy wheels. Now I have to say, the rear is my least favourite angle. It is hard to make boxier SUVs look nice from behind, but the coupish designs offer less practicality and visibility than this would. The standout feature here would also be the continuous LED light strip. Overall, in terms of design, it doesn't really stand out as very unique from design solutions we've already been seeing from Mercedes. The two different models offer two different motor setups. The EQB 250 is front-wheel drive and has a single motor powered by a 66.5 kilowatt hour battery. It produces 140 kilowatts of power and 385 newton meters of torque. It offers about 370 kilometers of range WLTP and at 0 to 100 time is listed at 8.9 seconds. The one I have here is the EQB 350, which have dual electric motors that power all four wheels. It has the same 66.5 kilowatt hour battery and it produces 215 kilowatts of power and 520 newton meters of torque. WLTP range is 350 kilometers and it zips from 0 to 100 in 6.2 seconds. First thing to note is the range being lower than we see in many of the rivals, which sit well over 400 kilometers WLTP. Now, one of the main contributing factors would be the smaller battery of 66.5 kilowatt hours. It shouldn't be a deal breaker because 350 kilometers of range is actually very workable. And in our testing, we drove this EQB for a week with regular driving and only charged it once. And even then that was because we wanted to rather than because we had to. So it really depends on what you'll be using the car for as to whether or not that range will be enough. But we do have to note it sits below the Ionic 5 and EV6, which offer ranges well into the 400s. When it comes to charging, it's actually pretty cool that Mercedes provide you with two different cables. Your standard emergency cable, which allows you to plug into any 240 volt power output, and charging with that will take about 34 hours and averages about nine kilometers per hour of charge. You also get a Type 2 to Type 2 cable, which is handy, especially in the Adelaide CBD, where you're required to have your own Type 2 cable to use many of the chargers here. Using a 7 kilowatt home charger will get you to a full charge in 9.5 hours. The maximum charging input is 100 kilowatts and can offer charge from 10 to 80% in 33 minutes. Now, I don't want to get overly technical, but it's important to note that we see faster charge times in Kia and Hyundai because they also have an 800 volt battery architecture. Whereas here, it only has a 420 volt architecture. So what's it like to drive? Driving the EQB is where you are very quickly reminded why there's such a strong reputation behind this badge. It's such a big SUV, but maneuvering it is smooth and effortless. The thing that super impressed me was when we took it for a spin through the windy roads of the Adelaide Hills. And I really wanted to test out the driver assist features and wowzers. It was slowing me down around corners to the perfect speed and then picking up speed. And I noticed it would slow down a different amount depending on the corner. How did it know? It only required marginal steering effort from me as well. This felt like one of the most advanced, adaptive, AI supported driving experiences I think I've ever had in a car. There are some EV specific features like regen braking. You can control them using the paddle shifters. You also have the option to set them to auto, which lets the car determine the strength to apply. Personally, I like to have it on the strongest setting when I'm driving, but the auto feature is handy to have. Being Mercedes-Benz, you just expect the interior is a nice place to be. It's very spacious, comfortable and visually majestic in here. There are dual 10.25 inch screens, one for the digital instrument cluster and the other for infotainment. They're super crisp and the colours are so vivid. But I do find pressing things down the bottom of them a little bit difficult sometimes, just where these iconic Mercedes air vents sit up quite high. And also the screens are slightly smaller than I would have preferred. There are 64 different ambient lighting choices. I mean, that really allows you to be specific as to setting your mood for the day. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? 
change the ambient lighting to cyan. I'm sorry. Can you say that again, please? <laughs> change the ambient lighting to cyan. Is there a cyan? I'm sorry, but I can't help you with it right now. <laughs> hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Change the ambient lighting to purple. Okay, I'm changing the colour. Ah. I do have heated and cooled seats here, but they are all manually controlled and there aren't any options to save user profiles. It's actually really lovely back here. It's spacious, well lit as well with our panoramic sunroof. We've got our rear air vents, USB-C charging port, ISO fix points. We've also got our armrest with non-conventional cup holders. Thought they're pretty cool. This is one of only a few full EV seven-seaters currently available to our market. There's an auto tailgate. This five-seat version of the EQB has a huge 495 litres of boot space with the rear seats up and 1,710 litres of capacity with the second row laid flat. There's also an option for a third row of seats which allows it to become one of the very few full EV seven-seaters on the market. As mentioned, there is an option for a third row of seats. However, boot figures drop to 465 litres with the rear seats up and 1,620 litres of space with a third row laid flat. It is safety packed. I already mentioned how advanced the driver assistance package is. A few other noteworthy things I want to mention are the clarity of the 360 degree camera and the self parking. Current driver way pricing starts at around $96,000 for the EQB 250 and start at around $114,000 for this EQB 350 4Matic. To sum up, the 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQB 350 4Matic may not be the standout star in every area when compared to rivals like the Ionic 5 or EV6, but it definitely holds its ground in the expanding EV market. With its robust presence, comfortable drive, practical range and impressive suite of safety features, it's a solid entry in the luxury EV scene. It stands out as one of the few seven-seaters in the electric vehicle market. The latest EQB is a beautiful blend of luxury, practicality and eco-friendly driving. Thanks for watching Cartel TV. Now what do you think of the EQB? Has it done enough to be formidable against its rivals? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and you'll see me in my next review.